All right, let's do some more analysis. Um, let's say we're we are a softy, and you know we're kind of worried about the people that might be in danger for earthquakes. So I grabbed some data from the National Atlas. So I got earthquakes from 1564 to 2004 here, and I've got cities and towns. And I want to know which major cities are within a certain distance of some of the major earthquakes that have occurred out there. So I can kind of identify where there might be a risk. So we're going to use, we could use selections just like we did in the previous video of using select um, by attribute and select by location in order to do that. But this time I want to use some geoprocessing tools. I want to use some overlay tools to do the same thing. Now we're going to start off, I want to talk a little bit about the tools uh, before we actually do the analysis. Uh, we're going to find tools in, in ARC in a couple different locations. A lot of the geoprocessing tools are up here, some of the commonly one overlay uh, tools up here. There's the toolbox, which is kind of a collection of everything. It's a little bit difficult to use. So if I'm looking for something, uh, I get this toolbox and kind of got to hunt uh, to find things. Uh, so if I'm looking for overlay tools, whatever, it might be difficult to find here. So they're there, but I don't su suggest using it that way. And then there's also uh, being able to search for tools. <clears throat> and I find this is the, the quickest way to find something I'm interested in. Uh, so if I want to do a clip, uh, I can pretty easily uh, get to a clip and check a couple different options and find out more about them. Um, I can also, once I've found a tool, I can mouse over it and get information about that tool. So if I'm not sure if it's the right clip, if there's multiple options, I can read that. I can open the tool itself um, and look at information here. So I can click on different boxes to find out what each of the parameters are needed for that tool. And if I'm still not sure what this tool does, I can click on the tool help and bring up the Arc Tool Arc uh, help system. And this is the most comprehensive set uh, uh, collection of information about that tool, what it does, uh, any caveats to its use, uh, and so forth. So plenty of places to find out more information to make sure that I'm using the right tool and that I'm using it correctly. All right, a couple things before we want to dive in to use tools, though. A lot of these tools operate uh, on defaults, and sometimes those de defaults are good, sometimes they're not. All of these are set within an environment settings. So if I go into geoprocessing again, I got this option for environments. And there are a lot of different things that I can set. A lot of these are particularly important for doing raster analysis. Uh, for our vector analysis right now, I'm just going to be looking at uh, one set of uh, parameters that I'm going to set here. And that's the current workspace. So by default, uh, Arc defaults to a home folder and, and stores things in a default geodatabase. And I want to switch that. I'm going to be using mostly shape files for this. And this is the folder that I want to use both to my current workspace and my scratch workspace. Uh, so you might want to set that to make sure that the defaults where it saved things are, are the place that you want them. And then you may want to have a look through some of these other options to see some of the other environmental settings or defaults that Arc uses. All right, anything else before we get started? Um, once you use a tool and it gives you an error and you're not quite sure what's going on, you may want to look at this results area. This kind of keeps a, a running um, list of the different tools you've run and what the results of those are. So we may look at that in a moment once we finish a tool. All right, let's get cranking. So we'll, on the next video, uh, we'll actually use some of those tools.